Do you know who composed that piece that you're practicing? No. Who? Me. You were right. Just your beloved. Music is all I understand. And my beloved. I'm at a stage now where I regard myself as retired and only work if it's something I absolutely uh, uh, can't refuse. And uh, um, this was obviously uh, one of those things. And I have these criteria for, for the, the, one of the criteria is to, to test myself all the time, to see how good an actor I can be. And I, I've done that all my life, you know, even in the theatre when I was young, I, I just... I, I was never in competition with... I was in competition with myself. And so one of the criteria I have is how far away from me is this character? I mean, if you gave me... I'm a, I'm a Cockney, you know, like from South London. If you give me a South London gangster, you know, I could do it standing on my head. And so I, I keep testing myself with roles which are as far away from me as possible. And a classical composer and conductor is that. And then what I try to do when uh, I'm actually working on it and filming it is to disappear and become the person. And, and I was very, very happy with what, because there was nothing of me left in this picture. Her Majesty the Queen would be simply ecstatic to hear you conduct your famous simple songs. I will not. Well, I'm sure you've not forgotten how it's done. No, I haven't forgotten how it's done. I understood uh, Paolo, what he was getting at with the old age. I'm not a person like that. I'm hardly apathetic. I'm, I'm the completely opposite of, of, of what Fred Bellinger was. But I know Fred, lots of Fred Bellingers, and, 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 I know, and I know why they are, because I've had to present, prevent myself from becoming Fred, Fred Bellinger by, by bec becoming me. What do you do all day, Fred? Well, they tell me I'm apathetic, so why I don't do anything. Like... Don't you miss your work? I miss my wife. You didn't know the first thing about my mother. You never bothered to take care of her. You gave everything to your music. But no matter what happened, she still wanted to be with you. Who were you? I'm from a very poor working class family. And some of my best friends are billionaires, you know, with their own yachts, planes and everything, you know, not exclusively. And they're not even there because they're billionaires. I, I got to know them. I didn't know they were billionaires or they hadn't become billionaires, but you do, you know. So you know every stratosphere of life and you've seen it all because a lot of the very rich or the very wealthy or the very rich, the posh, they've never seen the other side that I've seen. So you sit there, wonder sometimes looking, you go, I know it all. I know all the stratus, right? And so it's, it's an extremely privileged position. How's it going, Mr. Bellinger? It's going. I don't know where, but it's going. Daddy, I've arranged the full service for you. You're going to have a massage, a sauna, checkups with the doctor to help you get back in shape. At my age, getting in shape is merely a waste of time. Gosh, you guys have got a strange friendship. No, it's not strange, it's a good friendship. And in a good friendship, you only tell each other the good things. Paolo, he lets you go. And if you get the rehearsal right, he'll print it, you know? But he, he likes to film the rehearsal, but then why he's making up his mind to see what you're gonna do really, 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 and whether to say anything. And somehow or other, I must have got, got it right, because he never stopped me to say anything. He just let me get on with it, you know? Uh, uh, and. He thought I could hear him laughing sometimes at the things I said, you know. You've now got these brilliant guys who write brilliantly and direct brilliantly. And I'd, I'd just done six pictures with Chris Nolan, who writes and directs brilliantly. And now I'm doing a picture here with another guy who writes and directs brilliantly. And, and it, it's so interesting because the older directors, you know, you either had a great screenwriter and a great director, you, you never wrote your own screenplays. I was stunned. I thought it was fabulous. I sat there, I've, see, I've seen it twice now. I don't mind seeing it again. Usually I go, I don't want to sit through the movie. When, when in the premiere, I go and have lunch, you know, dinner with my wife, and I'll come back and go on stage at the end. No, I wanted to sit through this one again. I'd already seen it. <laughs> <laughs>